our, our friends think that them being bad and running around doing stupid things is the problem. All right? Hey, I, I got to be good. I got to be good before I can come to church. And I got I to gotta clean up my act. And, and we think that too. And, and, that, and that's why we... We stop thinking like that because that's not that that type of thinking doesn't line up with scripture. Since when you were since when you were dead, it doesn't say when you were bad. Right? So you know our, our, our and this is in this is out of straight out of Ephesians chapter two. You know, you, you were dead. You weren't bad. I mean, you might have been doing bad things, but you, our, our friend who doesn't know Jesus, their main problem is not that they're bad. It's it's that they're what? Like, they're dead. Yeah, spiritually dead. Now, they're going to look at you. I'm not dead. I'm, I'm alive. And we go, I know that. You're physically alive. I'm not saying you're physically dead. I'm saying, I'm saying, so this is pre, this is pre, probably pre-salvation discipleship, right? I'm not stupid. I know you're alive, right? What, what we're saying is, um, your, your main problem is that you're spiritually dead, dead. You're, you're separated from God. You're, you're spiritually dead. You're separated Separated from from God, and and so that's where we want to make sure that we're thinking rightly also about ourselves. Now that we've been made alive in Christ, we want to walk in the Spirit and with the Spirit. We want to listen to Him, right? As He speaks to our conscience, as He's uh, revealing revealing Himself in in Scripture. So you, you were dead in your sins and in, this, in, the, in the circumcision of your sinful nature. Um, and then it, who's, who's the next, who, who, is, who is mentioned in the, in the second half of verse 13? Who is, who is brought up? Who's mentioned there? God made you alive with Christ. Yeah. So... Who, who's who's doing the action? God. God. Yeah, God. And what he do? What's the first? What's the first thing he did? Forgave. He made you alive. Uh -huh. Right. And then the second thing. You just said it, Alan. Uh, forgave. Forgave. What's the third thing that he that he did? He made you alive. Forgave your sins, and then what did he do? It's a verb. Um, yeah, your version might not. Yeah. Can canceled the charge. He canceled the charge or the written code. All right, and you go on down in verse 14, and what did he do with that? code or that written charge took it away took it away and did what to it, nailed it to the nailed cross. it to the cross and in in that he in verse 15 what did he do to the powers and authorities mine says he disarmed yeah he disarmed what does yours say alan he made a public spectacle mm -hmm. of them. Mine, mine says, verse 15. Uh, he, disarmed, yeah. Yeah. It says he disarmed the powers and authorities and made a public spectacle of them triumphing, triumphing over them by, by what? What's the last word there? The cross. Mine says in him. Yeah. In him, in, in Jesus. Man, that is some rich, deep theological truth right there for us. It's 
all done by him. And then, then back up there in verse um, verse 9, all uh, for, for in Christ all the fullness of deity dwells and and you have been given the full that fullness in Christ and then he goes to explain it goes on to explain it that's some good stuff right there man so on our bad days Right when we're feeling discouraged or we've messed up or whatever, we go back to this and say, "Okay, God, this is what God has done, and I've been given that freedom, and so I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to choose to choose to walk in it." Right. <clears throat> 